This week on the Authentic Brand Builders podcast, I'm excited to bring you another interview. You're going to tune in on a conversation I had with my new friend Blair, the founder of Clio Social. Now, we are going to talk more about social media. And if you know anything about me here at Brand Mary, it's not my favorite way to market. In fact, I built my entire business focusing more on SEO platforms, but it doesn't mean that I don't use SEO in my marketing. It doesn't mean that I don't sometimes love to try all of the new trends and the things that are happening. However, I love bringing on people to this podcast who truly love social media. And Blair is one of those individuals. Now, Blair co-founded Clio Social after years in journalism and working with private clients. And she and I had an amazing conversation where she really gave you some insider tips on what's working on social media in 2024, how to plan social media. This is exactly what they do at her agency to work with their clients. So you are getting a step-by-step -step breakdown. And we nerded out on all things repurposing. As you know here at Brand Mary, repurposing is my love language. And it's actually how I show up on social media, by repurposing a lot of my core content that I use on the those SEO platforms. So I'm really excited to jump into this conversation with Blair. Be sure to take a lot of notes. If you're using social media, I know you're going to get a lot of really golden nuggets that you can apply. And as always, thanks for being an authentic brand builder and being here. Let's get into today's episode. This is the Authentic Brand Builders Podcast with Michelle Knight. Blair, I am so excited to have you on the podcast today, especially to talk about social media, which uh, as my listeners know, I have a love-hate relationship with. <laughs> so I would love to just kick it off where you can tell us a little bit more about your brand story and you know what led you to ultimately kind of being a social media strategist. Yeah, totally. One of my favorite stories, because obviously it starts with me and my best friend having a drink and then Cleo was born, but I'll back up a little bit. So I found myself in marketing in an agency after being in journalism. So I was still freelancing, but I was working in a marketing agency doing mostly PR, but then influencers started coming up. So I built an influencer part of that agency along with them. And then social media is like, oh, now our brands need to have social media accounts. Like, let's figure it out. So we, I think what's funny is that today in school, people actually learn how to do social media when they go to marketing school. I know, hilarious, because we didn't get that. Um, but at the time, we were just all like figuring it out. So as that happened, funny enough, my best friend, Irina, who also hadn't planned to be in marketing, I feel like that happens a lot, um, was running her own business and deciding, you know, if she should kind of sell it or what, where she should go with life and started looking for a job. Um, and I realized that social should really be something that is done by a separate agency because it's so nuanced. It's so specific. Um, you know, it needs a lot of expertise, a lot of different people to run it, which is as we can get into how we run my agency as well. Um, so I called her up one day and I was like, okay, let's grab a drink and let's talk about this. So we're talking it over and we decided that we're just going to go for it. We're just going to go and do a social media agency. We're going to really focus on being partners with our clients, like really getting in with their brand, learning what they want to do on social, who they are as a business. Um, and that was five years ago. And here we are. Hi. <laughs> Love that. I also love that we have a PR background because a lot of people don't know that my major is in public relations oh, and I worked for a big PR firm for a few years and that has played such a big role in kind of like my approach to messaging and social media. Yeah. And I'm sure you kind of like have the same style, <laughs> I would guess, if you have a PR background. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I think it's so interesting what you say about social media having a different strategy can you talk a little bit more about that because you know I think we group social media into just it's marketing it's content creation but share a little bit more about how you are kind of supporting your clients in this way yeah I definitely can and I can also share some insights on how people can go about and do it themselves when they're not at the point that they can work with an agency yet which of course is a step to go past. So one thing that I think about with strategy that's different than a regular marketing strategy is that social is so much of its own entity. It still goes along with your full brand. So I know 
brand is your thing and brand is everything to us as well. But the way you show up on social is so much more immediate. You need to have that authenticity. You have to be in front of your, your um, clients or the people you want to buy your product, whatever you're doing all the time. And you're, and that's where they really go to, to get to know you. So you want to take that brand and then strategize how you want to show up to people on that platform. So what we talk about a lot when it comes to like what to ask yourself when you're building a social strategy is who do you want to be looking at your page and how do you want them to feel? Um, and sometimes like it does almost sound a little bit woo woo when you think about it, but you really just put yourself into like that person's head and say, when they're on my page, I want them to feel, you know, energized, excited, whatever the things are. And then you'll really see that your brand comes to life through that and the way that your brand started and how you show up on social, how it blends and how it's different. We even do a different tone of voice for our clients on social because even though it's, it should be similar to your website and your digital and your, if you have people on the phone doing sales, whatever it is, it's a little bit different on social. It's usually more conversational. Um, it's usually more like direct to the person as well than it would be on a website. So we do a different tone of voice. And then I would say this is the most important piece, whether you're doing it yourself or you're hiring someone to do this for you, is the content buckets. So your content strategy is going to be everything when you're planning your social. So you want to have what are the topics that are most important to your brand for people to know about? There could be the actual service or product, but along with that, it's maybe a certain community that you're servicing. You want them to know that you're part of that. You want to be really integrated and show that lifestyle piece. And then maybe you have something special you do. Maybe you have, you know, um, a charity you work with. Maybe it's something that you're really passionate about. It cannot be a separate bucket. And then weighting those buckets. What's the most important to you in those three to four buckets? And there you have your content plan. Now you can go off and make content and actually know, you know, like where that should go and how that should look on your feed. So if you have 15 posts a month, you now could say, okay, six should be this, five should be this, you know, whatever number. Um, and a big part of that strategy, I say as the, the last piece is platforms. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many platforms, definitely should be on a few. I know you've spoken about this before, like not putting all your eggs in one basket. And it's so true. Um, but you also have to prioritize. So TikTok, for example, is one that people always want to be on, but it takes so much time because you have to be putting out constant video. Um, so you have to ask yourself, like, should I maybe prioritize Instagram and LinkedIn first and then, you know, jump into TikTok later and think to yourself, um, you know, especially if you're doing it on your own, if you're one person, if you're a few people, it's better, you know, in my opinion, and we talk about this at Clio a lot to do a few things well, then try to do all the things and stretch yourself to thin. Yeah, we call it phased out marketing inside of my academy where I'm like, give it 30 to 60 days, get a new routine, get it all streamlined, and then move on to the next piece, especially if you're a solopreneur. Now, if you're hiring a team, like, yeah. go let them work their fucking <laughs> magic. <laughs> and you could just like sit back a little bit. But when you are a solopreneur and you're testing out these different platforms, it is really important that you don't get started all at once. I love what you said about content buckets. Um, <laughs> and I think what I really loved about what you said is that there was that personal aspect. And I'd love to talk about that in regards to social media because I think what a lot of people struggle with is either it's all personal and they forget that they need to talk about their products and their services, or it's all business and they forget the connection piece. So do you have any maybe tips on choosing your buckets or things that they can kind of think about in order to choose the right buckets for their brand? Yeah, for sure. I think I would categorize it more if you're, if you're an influencer, for example, it's very much you as a brand, but a lot of brands, even if they're not technically influencer brands are kind of influencer brands because maybe the product is very focused on you, right? So that's kind of a mix or you have a, um, a brand that's all service and product and it's not really relying on you. All of those still have personal and product in them, um, but in different ways. So if you're more of an influencer side, you should be maybe, you know, 85% of that content and then only leave a little bit left over to be brand only. Um, but if you're someone who your brand is very reliant on you, it could be really 50-50. And then on the side of product, I think people are really hesitant to take their product or service and put their face behind it. Um, but the way that the audience loves that, we see in every single client we've ever worked with. It could be absolutely any service, any product, people want to know who's behind it, especially with where we are with social. Like we know that we want to see often maybe too much of celebrity lives and, and things like that, but it, it's for a reason. Like we've been let into this and the expectation is that we're getting this. So when it comes to brand, like they want to know 
where it's made, how it's made, who's making it, where the idea come from. And like on a constant rotation too, because I always joke that like when you're looking at a social media feed, how many times are you really going to scroll down? Like say you go and you check out a new social feed, you're probably going to scroll like three times. If you're really into it, like maybe five. Um, But then if your brand story is lower than that, they're not going to see it, you know? So it's like consistently showing up as yourself, but in, in those like different percentages based on your industry. Ooh, I like that. I love a good percentage situation, <laughs> especially as you were already breaking down, like choose your content buckets, then choose X posts are going to be this, X posts are going to be in this bucket, so on and so forth. And now we have a percentage on like how we should kind of be showing up. I love to post that you did on like 2024 trends. You posted it on social media and it was like things we want to see. And it was almost the same as what I kind of posted which I think is like just a sign that one we're just on it and two like this is definitely what we're seeing but you really emphasized authenticity casual feed um and the other thing that was really coming up was the sense of community and I think Mm -hmm. when we are wanting to build community which is what consumers want they want to be part of something they want to see who you truly are, right? They want to know who you are as a person. Can you speak a little bit more about this like massive push that we're seeing as well around building community? Yeah, for sure. And I think it actually, funny enough, goes back to how you mentioned the love-hate relationship with social media, because there's a lot out there about, you know, how social media can have negative effects, especially on, you know, the younger generation and all of that. And I think where what we need to remember as well is how positive it can be in terms of creating community. Like we saw that, I think, during the pandemic and different times where we needed to come together. Um, it can really be a way to, to it is definitely, you need the IRL time, like you can't just be on your phone, but like it is a way to bring people together. So for example, if you service a very specific community to your product, whoever that is, you know, it could be women founders, it could be, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you really want to talk to them. It's not just about talking at them, you know, on social, about bringing them in to talk with you. There are so many ways to do that. The best way is honestly putting, as you just mentioned, authentic content up about your experience. So speaking personally, not having that kind of like polish and sheen in front of it. I'm big on that, as you probably can tell already, like telling true stories about your experience, what you're doing. And people really resonate with that. Like they re- really resonate with not having that polish in front of what you're saying and they will put comments like and I think there's a lot of talk about like CTAs and asking questions while that's important it's almost more important just to have something that someone would want to respond to without you prompting them Mm. Um, and I think people also often think about Instagram which is a place you could start a community but I'm even thinking these days more about LinkedIn for example right like LinkedIn is a place where I think we get stuck that it's B2B, but it's really changed over the last year and a half or so where people are coming in there as well to talk more as like a consumer. And I always say like the people on LinkedIn are on there for business, but don't forget they're also humans that are consuming things. And on Instagram, they are people that are consuming things, but they might also have jobs, right? So like everyone is in those places and starting those conversations, I find LinkedIn is a really great place to start community and it's more personal then it is about brand. And the more personal you can get, like if you are, you work for a brand that has um, a founder who's willing to go on LinkedIn and talk or, or do videos, that's so much more powerful sometimes than it coming from the brand itself. And then you'll see that filter in, right? Like those people will come to Instagram, they'll come to your TikTok, like they'll come and they'll join you in that community, but you just have to show up um, as yourself. So it really does go back to everything we've talked about with being personal and and showing up on social. Yeah. So many of our listeners are solopreneur kind of solo brands. And, you know, with that style, it's so natural for them to just be the ones creating the content and them showing Mm -hmm. their faces, you know? And so one thing that, one question I get a lot when it comes to the concept of community is like, okay, Michelle, should I be like creating a community like with in my platform, like just speaking directly to my community, or should I be creating community community in like a separate group or Mm -hmm. Instagram has the new channels. So what is your kind of opinion on that? So that's actually something that we posted recently about broadcast channels, for example. So Instagram has this feature now where you could have a broadcast channel where people have to join that. And it's almost like a, like a news feed, but only like you are the one writing on it for people. 
Um, if you haven't seen it, it's great to check out on Instagram. I think that's one example. Facebook groups are another example. Like they're still there. Facebook, people think Facebook doesn't exist anymore. Like it, it very much does, but like in groups, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also I would say even Slack groups. I know Slack isn't really considered social media, but more and more we're seeing these Slack groups coming out for like a specific community. And what's really cool about all these examples versus like the community that you're just you're forming um, and your general feeds on social media is people have to opt in to be there. And yes, of course, they're following you on Instagram or they're following you on LinkedIn or whatever, but it's very different when they're opting in to be part of this like very specific community. And those people are going to be your everything, right? Like those are people that are following for you, for your product, um, you know, whatever you're doing, they're there and, and they're ready to listen. So that's very powerful. That's a really great question where you could take this wider community and say, hey, who wants to be part of my, you know, very small, like exclusive community? Maybe you max it out a certain amount of number, even though that's like kind of hard to do, mm-hmm. but to keep it this like safe place, maybe you are vetting people so you make sure that they're friendly and that they're going to be, you know, contributing in a positive way. And that sort of thing, you probably want to have certain rules set up where you, you know, maybe you can't self-promote, make a course like paid speech, all those things, like really making it feel like a safe space for them. Um, and that's super powerful. Yeah. Community has been a hot topic for me since like day one. I've always said that like, if you don't have a community, you don't have a business because like you said, like these are the people that are going to buy from you ultimately keep coming back, which is something I talk a lot. Client retention, brand affinity. They're so important. We focus too much on like the one-off sale where the money is really in the retention, in my opinion. And I think, you know, I talked about community earlier this year, actually on a podcast when I was talking about, you know, trends. And one of the things we've always talked about is email marketing, like getting people off of social, um, Mm -hmm. you know, onto email marketing. But I think what we're seeing is this in between Mm -hmm. and treating it as like maybe people who aren't ready to take the next step with email marketing, but they're already on Instagram. So it's okay for them to say, yeah, I'd like to, you know, hear a little bit more from you or just another touch point. And I love me some multiple touch points. (laughs) It's one of the reasons I love repurposing because it allows me to reach people on a bunch of different platforms. And I know that this is a topic that you also recently talked about, you know, repurposing, but I love what you were sharing in terms of repurposing social content, because this is not something that I have explored too much. I would love to dive into this topic. Um, especially as it relates to community. So I had an episode come out a couple months ago that was all about people getting irritated with repurposing. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw a bunch of threads where people were like, I don't want to see this whole copy and paste, yada, yada. And I think that ties in with community, right? If someone is following you, they want to be, they want to feel like you're giving them what they need, fresh content. So how are you refreshing the content so we don't piss everybody off on social (laughs) media? Because I need to know. (laughs) where purposing has become such like a bad word in the industry. And I think it's almost been taken out of context in some ways where people think of repurposing as copy and paste, which is not the way, at least, you know, we think about it at Clio. And I think people who understand it, think about it. Uh, What I mean is, is it repurposing ideas, honestly, right. And also content at the same time. But again, with the whole thing with like scrolling through your feed, a lot of social media, funny enough, is like repeating yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You're repeating what your brand is doing. You're repeating what you believe in. You're repeating that over and over again. But yeah, it has to be somewhat new and fresh. So if you have ideas from a few months ago, you can go back to those and say, okay, this is what I thought five months ago. You'll, you might think differently about them now and you might want to have an update on that. Like we're going through the process of going through old blogs right now and redoing them because things have changed so much. So that exists for social content on a much easier scale. Um, And even beyond that, you can do some level of copy and paste if you do it carefully. So for example, if you've taken a video of yourself, you can cut the video part out and just take the recording and put that on an image that maybe has some like animated moving parts so that your voice comes through. And that kind of thing is so helpful when you're a solopreneur and you need to do everything on your own to take videos constantly. There's lots of things, and I, I know we'll get to this as well in terms of process. Um, but in terms of just like cutting down on your time, it's so important to take what you already have. So I'd say ideas are one really important way to repurpose. And one piece of the process that's going to be important is keeping track of those ideas, right? Because if they're just like out in the world, you won't really remember them. 
But if they're in a list month to month, that's really important. Um, thinking about everything you have, is it, did you do a photo shoot where, you know, you can take a part of that photo? Is there a video you can clip? Is there audio you have that you can clip as well and put on top of a photo? Is there a copy you have that you can completely rewrite? So I'd be very hesitant to copy and paste, but re- just like redoing it every single time for months on end, it's basically impossible. Like unless you have, there's like, unless there's 30 new ideas every month constantly in the world, which there probably isn't, um, you know, repurposing is probably something you're already doing without realizing it in some ways too. So why not just kind of put a process behind that? I love a good system. You know, I (laughs) I feel it just makes our lives so much easier. And, you know, I love that we're talking about this whole repetition and repeating yourself. I mean, that I tell my clients all the time, especially my clients who are nervous about it. They're like, well, I already said that. I was like, first off, not everyone saw it. Second, this is how we build businesses. Like, this is how we become known for something. We have something that we stand behind. We say it, and we say it a bunch of different ways, you know? <laughs> and I think that even relates to, like, your brand story. So, you know, especially when it comes to social media, I talk a lot about brand storytelling. I talk a lot about digital storytelling. And taking your brand story and breaking it down into smaller kind of micro stories for the digital storytelling process, saying that story different ways at different times. I've had people comment and said, I've been following you for X number of weeks and didn't know this about your story because each time something new might come out. And so I think just like also getting through the fact that repetition is okay. It's okay to repeat yourself. But like you're saying, put a fresh spin on it. Uh, I love what you said about like clipping video, clipping things, taking captions, maybe turning them into a reel, stuff like that. Like, Work smarter, not harder. That's like my <laughs> whole motto here. <laughs> exactly. And it goes back to your email thing too, right? Like the content tree, I feel like is often forgotten in modern marketing. But the whole idea of that was that you have an idea, maybe a theme or even three themes for the month that trickles down to your social media, that trickles down into your email, a blog. Like it, it could be in all these places because even if someone's looking in all those places, which would be amazing, but they're probably not, um, they'll see something a little bit different in each one. And they'll also start to recognize and, and understand the brand more. But that content could be reused across everything you do every month. Um, you know, you make a graphic. Yeah, throw that graphic on your email. Put that graphic in your broadcast channel or, or whatever. And like, in that way, you're, you're making sure you're reaching people. And I say when it comes back to those like broadcast channels or those Facebook, Facebook groups or Slack groups, those ones are the ones where I would say, give them just like a little bit more, like give them a little more of what's behind the scenes, a little more insight, like make it worth it for them to be there. Yeah. I have a broadcast channel that I am, it's helping me fall back in love with Instagram. So this was something <laughs> I like said at the beginning of the year. I'm like, I love social media. I'm going to love social media this year. Not going to make me mad. I'm going to figure out like, how do I make it my own? And so the second I got the broadcast channel, I was like, okay, this could be really fun. So I send like audio messages Mm -hmm. when I'm thinking of something that I'm not going to write a whole post about or an email about. And I do a lot of Q&A. So like, what questions do you have about content? And then I answer each one inside of the channel. So it really is that kind of like extra step. And it's a lot easier than having to draft an entire email and, you know, proofread and all of those different things. So if anyone is not using using this feature, I highly suggest you start thinking about like how you could use it or LinkedIn or a different platform, depending on what you're using. So I love that we've talked about authenticity. Number one, we have prioritized building a community, which again, so huge and so, so important. And the art of kind of, you know, making your life a lot easier in terms of repeating your content or refreshing it. So Uh, For me, those are the three central, like, (laughs) I'm telling you, like, themes for my brand and my strategy in social media. So I'd love to take it a step further and now support entrepreneurs in actually planning out their social media content. And I know you've got a lot for me here, so I'm going to hand it over and just, like, ask questions as they come up. Yeah, interrupt me anytime because this is what we originally talked about for today. And it's so important because for people that are getting into social media, starting a brand, or like wanting to go further with their brand on social, whatever point you're at. Um, And I'll speak, I think, mainly to the solopreneur, but this can be for anything really, an influencer, like a brand, that sort of thing. Anyone who's at that stage, um, it can feel like so much, you know, it's like, it's a job in itself, right? It's like, that's why I do what I do. Um, But it's totally possible. And I would say it comes to down to two things. One is planning. And two is also like allowing 
for last minute things to happen, Mm -hmm. which are two very different things. (laughs) It's a hard concept to wrap your head around. I call it inspiration, like have the workflow and then leave room for inspiration. But I love that. Yes, exactly. So the planning is, is very much coming to treating social media like it's just as important as every other part of your job. So I find it often falls to the wayside for people. Um, but it's so important to keep going because you won't start seeing those results unless you remain consistent, both because of the algorithm, like you want the algorithm to like you and you have to post in the way it likes. So for Instagram, that's like every other day for TikTok, that's like every day or even more than every day for LinkedIn, that's like three times a week. Like, so those are the different cadences that the algorithm likes. And then people that are, are following you, like if you just drop off for two weeks, they will kind of forget about you. Like that sounds kind of wild, but that's our attention span these days, right? That's what we're used to. Um, so really important to have that, always have a plan going forward. So that's, and you probably talked about this in the past many times, but I'll say it again, batching your content, like so important. So if you're someone that, you know, you're in that middle spot where like 50% has to be you and 50% is your business. Let's go with that example. Um, say, you know, you're like a health brand. So you want to have your product there, but you also want to talk about it. So you can batch even, um, let's say 15 videos in one go. That's enough videos for two months of content on Instagram. If you're doing like half of your content as videos of you, just one day kind of stand in front of a camera and go through, change your shirt, like literally change your shirt, change your hair, change your lipstick, whatever. I don't even do all of that, just so everyone knows, but I'm also very laid back. <laughs> or or you don't have to do any of it. And you're like, I did this is the shirt that I always wear, guys. Like, no, too bad. Um, or if you're say someone who does a lot of recipes, like you're someone that is um an influencer who is about health and healthy recipes or or whatnot. So maybe you're actually grabbing a lot of food, you're actually doing every recipe, you're filming that okay, you have a lot of food, invite your friends over, they'll love it, like have a dinner (laughs) and like have that done, you know, because maybe there'll be um, a really important trend that comes up. And in that case, that's when you can have that last minute stuff. That's when you could say, okay, I saw this trend, uh, TikTok always has those recipe trends, right? So you're like, okay, I'm going to buy the ingredients. Usually have, I would say three to four days to grab a trend. So put in your calendar, just like you put in the calendar, um, a call with somebody that's really important you know, Thursday at two to three, I'm going to cook this recipe. And like, just if it's in your calendar, you'll do it. And that kind of gives you that last minute ability without making it so scary. You know, people who film their content and post it every day, I can't imagine that. Like that seems like so much and so much pressure and so much stress every day to be like, oh, I didn't do it yet. I didn't do that yet. But if you know you have a full calendar, um, then you're ready to go. And then you have something last minute and you have that space for yourself and that time, frankly, to get that done. And then besides, I'm talking about video a lot because video is obviously a really well-performing piece of content. And it works so well for everyone. It's such a great trust builder. So I keep telling my clients, you need to be on video. We're going to figure it out. But yes, yes, keep talking. We can talk about that too in terms of being scared to be on video because mm-hmm. um, it's, it's very common. And besides that, you know, you say you have photography and graphics as your other pieces of visuals, like carousels, um, whatever it is. A, a photo shoot is super helpful. You do a photo shoot, whether it's with a professional photographer or just with a few friends where you grab like a space and you take pictures of each other. Um, it's really great to have business friends, um, you know, as I'm sure all of you listening already know. And so go and like take pictures of each other, have that ready for the month you know, graphics, like whether you have a designer or create some templates for you on Canva or, you know, you're talented at it yourself using Figma, whatever tool you use and just like batching those for the month. And usually you could take even say one day a month where you put in your calendar again, like those five hours and just get it all done, schedule it um, depending on what you're using. Like we use Sprout Social for our clients, but you can use, yeah, you can use Later for Instagram. You can use Hootsuite for you know, LinkedIn, um, those are usually kind of the two sides of things that we talk about, or even like on meta itself, um, you can schedule things on LinkedIn itself. So there's so many ways, just like schedule it in some ways, forget it. Don't fully forget it. Cause if someone comments, you have to answer, but it is very much like I said it and, and forget it and then leave yourself space for those last minute trends. 
Yes. Ooh, I love all of this. There's so much. Um, the batching is my jam. And what I love, you know, I talk a lot about long form content. That's my specialty. Mm-hmm. And I use a lot of that to then repurpose onto social media. That's my batched stuff, right? Like my carousels, mm-hmm. uh, my videos. As you start doing this, I love that we talk circling back to repurposing keeping it in some sort of log. So we keep all of the videos that we create linked from Google Drive into ClickUp. Mm -hmm. And then I have where it has like Pinterest, you know, Instagram, TikTok. So I know where I've posted it and kind of when I've posted it. So anytime I'm not feeling it, which happens to so many of us, uh, you can go back and you can pull one of those pieces and either refresh it or share it on a different platform. So I love that you talked about just like getting into a routine of back so then you can create really a backlog which is I think the secret to consistency um and then you talk about like the last minute trends something I've noticed for myself this year is I like to keep that space that's where I'm really showing up personally Mm -hmm. do you see that with your clients as well like I feel like I can batch and plan so much of the like brand stuff the product the service stuff but then it leaves me room if I have an idea one day to just go in and be like this was a thought that I had that I thought that you might also resonate (laughs) with or just like share something cool that's happening in my personal life. Yeah, it definitely forces you to be creative. And I, and I totally get what you mean when you're not feeling it. And that is where that backlog of ideas comes in, which is so great. Um, But it's also good to give yourself that space where you sort of have to be creative. So, you know, there's a couple ways we do this. One thing is that if you know something's coming up that you'll probably have some kind of meme about like the Met Gala, right? So like, you know something hilarious to come out of that. So you can, we actually put all those things in our calendars to double check what happened and which clients it might fit with and make it like a funny meme or video or whatever it is and, and drop that in. So it's like a pre-scheduled creative time, as funny as that mm-hmm. sounds. Those are the most hilarious mornings on the Clio Slack because we're all just like sending ideas through and like having a hilarious time. Um, so you could do that with friends too, right? Like if you have an accountability club with some other friends as solopreneurs, like that's really fun. Um, otherwise trends come up all the time. You could even put in your calendar and we do this every day, but like for someone who's doing it on their own, you could do it say like twice a week, like Tuesday and Thursday, that could be your time for actually communicating with the people that follow you. So maybe you're doing outbound community management or whatever else is on your social media list. But in that hour, you can also check what trends are coming up, right? So that way you're not stressed about like, was there a trend today? Did I miss something? You're actually like looking on those two days And then maybe that's when you give yourself like an hour to do that, an hour to actually film or create if you need to. And if there are any trends, like, oh, you just got an hour of your life, like that's not so bad that you... Yeah, right. (laughs) You could save like, I like, if I have, I go and save a bunch of gardening stuff on Instagram. I'm like, all right, I can switch gears. Like, I don't have to look at this anymore. You know, I think the trend topic is a very hot topic, especially with my audience. They're like, well, how much is too much? Mm Because I've seen... I've seen the people who only do the trends and I'm like, it's too much. Like yeah. at this point in time, you're just saying the exact same thing that somebody else said. So you're working with your clients on this. Like what are some things that you're considering when you see a trend for them to kind of make it their own? One thing is if it fits with your brand, right? So if you see a trend and it doesn't feel right, either to you or your brand, because you're the voice behind your brand, just don't do it. You know, like I think like the idea, when, especially when TikTok was first coming up, and clients were like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do TikTok? Do I have to do a dance? <laughs> oh, no. no. like The, you know, the pointing was my favorite. I'm like, if you want to, like, yeah, go for it. But you do not have to do a TikTok dance to succeed. Like, don't worry. And if, if it doesn't feel right to you, like your audience will see that so quickly. So it's so important that you kind of don't do the trends that don't feel right to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's definitely, if your trends are dominating your feed, like that's not good. You really want your brand to come through. You want yourself to come through. Jumping on trends is so fun. And it is, I would say, important for social media because that's the way you're going to get that engagement. You're going to get in front of new people that are like searching the hashtag for the trend or whatever. Um, You're going to get on those those pages where people are looking for new things. So it is important to do. But I would say, first of all, don't stress about it. Like it's more important that you do your job and like let your batch content go out if that's the case. Like we don't get to every trend for Clio's own social media because we're probably doing it for our clients and we're busy doing that. Like, it's okay. Um, but it is really fun to do it when you can see it fitting in. So it's really the fit we're looking for and also the personality of the brand. 
we actually don't do trends and memes for all of our clients. Some of them, we don't do any because that's just not who they are. Like you have to be a humorous brand. Some of our brands like are about very serious topics and it would be, you know, out of touch to post something that is, you know, humorous. So you have to think about who you are, who you want to show up as, and that it fits with your brand. And that goes for absolutely anything, honestly, but it works with trends. (laughs) <laughs> I love that you shared that though, because um, my cl- former client Kenzie, who was on a couple, you know, yeah. weeks ago talking about AI, she is so quirky, and I love her personality, and she'll post stuff, and I'm like, that's hilarious. I would absolutely never do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just like it would be so weird for me to do. I have a very dry sense of humor, um, and same with like memes. Like, I love them. I think they're hilarious, but I, w- I just, I don't. You know, like yeah. I can't even think about how to apply them. It's so funny. So. I think it's really important to note that like, yes, trends are important. They're how we really get that brand awareness on these platforms and get in front of new people, but you don't have to do every single trend. And if you're constantly worried about keeping up with the trends, you're going to miss that really core content that talks about your specialty or, you know, those talking head videos for me are, I'm so happy that they are doing well Mm -hmm. and on the rise because they're that sweet spot where you can jump on a trend and maybe a topic, but you can also present your own personality and your own perspective in like a more thorough way. Uh, you know, at the time we're recording this, I am knee deep in the uh, royal family <laughs> TikTok. Aren't we all? <laughs> so deep, so deep into this. Um, but I am really gravitating towards the creators who are doing these like talking head videos and like really dissecting it. And I'm yeah. finding myself following them because I'm like, oh, I like your personality. I like the way that you share information. So we can't forget, like, yes, it might be a trend, but we really do have to make it our own. Exactly. I love that you shared that. Yeah, great. Okay, so we talked about this split, kind of, between having the plan and the last minute. Love that. I always say, if you plan, like people who are really reluctant to plan, if you plan, it actually opens up a lot of space in your brain for inspiration because you're not constantly stressed or in desperation mode on like, oh, I got to post today. You already have a plan in place, um, which makes life a lot easier. And you talked about batching and we talked about you use Sprout Social for your clients, Mm -hmm. which is great. I love that. There's so many different schedulers and it sounds like you're saying like pick one (laughs) one and make your life easier. It doesn't really matter which one. How are you just using Sprout Social to map out a plan or are you also using any other um, uh, software or tools for your clients? I'll tell you for sure how we do it for our clients. And I think in a lot of ways, someone who's doing it on their own could use a very similar process. Um, So what we do is we start with a content direction. So our writer will put a content direction together with every idea we want to do for the month. And then we go to our clients and we go through each one so they could say, oh, I have something to add. We really believe that our clients are, you know, the content experts and they should be adding to that content. It shouldn't just be from like Google or, or however else we're finding this, like they need to tell us directly. So we'll start them off, but they add a lot of content into, into our post during that call. Then we go off and create, this is part of how our brand works, which is that we have, and this is something that I know is not the case for a lot of listeners, but there's something you can look forward to is having, um, you know, we have a writer, we have a separate graphic designer, a separate photographer, a separate community manager, even someone who scheduled everything for us, which has been a huge game changer because social media, the reason it becomes this beast is because it takes a lot of different types of mindsets um, to do it super well, because what we forget, and, and this is why you shouldn't be so hard on yourself, anyone who's listening when it seems hard, because it is, right? You might not be someone that's comfortable doing coffee, can you do it 100%? You'll find where it works for you, but it might not be where you started, right? So I think in terms of, of that idea of why social media seems so hard, it's because there are literally eight different people working on every one of our accounts because it does take like those different types of brains. Um, but again, like it's totally possible, like as long as you find the way that works for you. Um, I've like now lost what I was talking about, but I'll go back to it. (laughs) Yeah, you're good. No, I love it. This was great. I'm glad that we had this like caveat because I think it's really easy to look at the frequency and the type of content that other people are putting out and think to yourself like, oh my gosh, why am I not putting that out? And then you realize they're working with an agency or they have a team of like 10 people and it's like, it might be their face, but that was pretty much all that they did, you know? Um, And I think it's really important to have that perspective when we approach social media and scheduling. So you were talking about them actually, or you guys actually creating the content. 
Yeah, perfect. So that's the, what, the way our, our team looks, but the way the process is after we do that content direction, which is again, how you can go back to those ideas and repurpose them if you have that content direction list. So I definitely recommend doing that step, even though it kind of seems like, why would I write my ideas out? And then I put them in my calendar. Like it is a worthwhile step just for that like bank of, of ideas. And then we put them into the calendar. We use like Google, um, just like a regular Google doc for calendar. It's like this whole different like squares for different posts. Like it's all set up that way, but you know, you can drop in your image, drop in your text, really important for Instagram. Cause you can see how like the feed looks. I know there's other things like Planoly that you can use. Like if you prefer an app, Google is good for an agency because we can have different comments in there, but if it's right. you working on your own, like something like a plan at least, totally fine. I've been um, using Canva. Yeah. Um, I've been loving that. I shared that on a recent episode. Like I've been loving using it because then all my graphics are right there, which is like really helpful. So yeah, that's a great tool too. Canva keeps adding on more and more. Like, like keep it all in one place, like schedule on Canva. Sure. Like that's great. Um, so Canva is a great one. And then from there, you can add in your photos you took, your videos you took, the graphics you made, add the copy and see it all in one place. And then after that, that's when you do like the client approval process, which you may or may not need to do depending on, you know, your role. Um, and then we schedule it all. It gets all scheduled into Sprout or whatever you're using. And then it goes out into the world. And then we make sure to jump on every account we work on every day to do community management Ingoing and outgoing, so making sure we answering everything, but also engaging with the community, which goes back to creating a community. Like you can't be expecting the community to just like come and exist in your channel if you're not going out and talking to other like-minded people. Um, and then at the end of the month, we measure everything. So that's also a great way to use that kind of scheduling software. Most of them do have reports you could run. So we have like a custom-built report in Sprout that we send our clients, where we're able to add our own insights. Um, but really actually taking the time, I would say, for solopreneurs to look at that report. You know, it's it's one thing to get your content out there, but to make sure it's working best for you, like what to actually look at which posts are, are doing the most and do more of those. Um, it sounds obvious, but like it's a really easy step to skip when you're busy. I think it goes back to what we talked about on in terms of repurposing and like yeah. recreating something. Like if you see that something does really well, a topic, like share it in a different way, create a new piece of content around it. Like it's so powerful. I think where a lot of people get hung up is like you said in the beginning is we feel like we constantly have to reinvent the wheel. If you're doing that every single day and we need to show up every single day, like of course you're only lasting 30 days consistently (laughs) and then you're burning out and then you're Mm -hmm. restarting social media again. Um, and so I love that we're talking about having a plan. It sounds like you really support your clients, which is amazing. (laughs) I love that. Um, And I would love to just talk about one final thing, I think, before, you know, we, and I could think we could keep talking forever, actually, I love it (laughs) so much, but I think what a lot of people struggle with is the analytic portion Mm -hmm. of it, the tracking. You know, it's really easy with social media to be like, I'm doing it, but there is no engagement. You know, we keep talking about community and they're like, but there is no one following me and there is no one commenting. Do you have any, you know, tips or suggestions or even just words of inspiration for somebody who is like, I'm doing everything you're telling me to do, but it's just not growing? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if it comes to a brand versus solopreneur, again, like if there is some budget with a brand, paid is kind of the obvious answer to that. Meta is a very pay to play brand. So even a little bit of boosting a couple hundred dollars a month like can go a long way in terms of at least like bringing that audience to you to start. Um, but there are definitely creative ways to boost that without using actual dollars. So, you know, again, like the friend group, like I'm all, that's an, I could go on another hour about that, but like having your business friends is so important. You know, when I started my business, I didn't have anyone like in my family or friends who were really doing that. Um, so I went and, and I found them, you know, I went, and I found, I went to events in, the, in my city and different places online and, and found these people. And now I have this like amazing tribe of business owners that I can go to. I cannot like recommend that enough. There's like lots of groups and places you can find people. And once you have them, especially like a few that are somewhere you can find in person, although like not necessary, you know, like use those people and help each other, like follow each other, comment on each other's things, start sharing with different people. Maybe there's whatever your mission is, maybe there's an influencer in your community that really believes in that, get, ask them to post it. Um, and, you know, give them whatever it is that you're doing in return, whether it's a product or like a service, like try to have that ability to help each other. 
we did so much of that early on in Clio um, that made such a difference. So just try to find those creative ways um, and talk to other people and, and help each other out, you know? And then of course there's like jumping on the trends as we talked about that can, you know, there, I don't know what other people are saying out in the world to different people listening, but you cannot plan a viral video. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't, but you can try, you can try to do the trends, try to get out there. Um, and you know, if I want to get some practical advice here too, like if it's really a struggle, like drop $50 of boosting into your post and like, see what happens. Mm. Um, hopefully that's possible for you. If it's not like we're just getting creative, but that's something that can make a big difference. Just to, just to grab your audience the first time. Once you have them, like you kind of have them as long as you keep posting consistently. But those, those first like couple hundred followers, like I know it's hard, um, because of the way that the platform works now. TikTok, on the other hand, you could actually grab followers a lot faster. Like yes. it's, it's still in its golden age. If it still exists soon, I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> big if <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but if it still exists, then it's still kind of in that golden age where, like, you can grow organically, like you could with Instagram seven, eight years ago. Mm. Um, so that's a great place to start, and then you can move them over to Instagram, grab them for your email list, grab them to your Slack channel, or or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, and don't and just have patience. You know, everybody's in the same boat. You might feel like everyone's doing better than you. But they all started where you, where you are and it'll be okay. <laughs> I talked about this in an email the other day where I was like, you know, it can be really easy to convince yourself because of the messaging that you're receiving online that like it's super easy and it happens overnight. If you just follow this really simple strategy, like your next video is going to go viral. Like you said, you cannot plan a viral video. Otherwise, we would all be going viral, yeah. okay? And the person who told you how to go viral, all of their videos would be viral. <laughs> So I think it's really important that no matter what you're choosing, whether it is social media or like a lot of the SEO platforms that I share, patience really is everything. And that's hard to hear yeah. as an entrepreneur who, especially a solopreneur who needs to bring in money, mm -hmm. but marketing is a long game. And the more that we look at marketing as a long game and not just like a day-to-day -day thing or a, I'll post one video and my life will be set. It just doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. And so it's such a mindset shift that we have to go through. And having these plans really helps, you know, the execution and taking a lot of the pressure off. I love what you said about collaborations. This is something I read in one of your blogs, I think, where you were talking about, you know, the predictions and saying collaborations. This has been my goal this year, which is why I'm doing more interviews on the podcast. I'm really bad at making <laughs> friends. <laughs> I'm really bad at going to networking events. I applaud anyone that does that. When you said that, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> for anyone else that's listening, a really great way can be having coffee chats, which is how I've met a lot of my entrepreneur friends online. If you're in a program with them and you just like really vibe with them, you know, messaging them or doing interviews like this, going on other people's podcasts, which is really great for outreach, obviously. But then also like we're connected now and I love that. Yeah. And like now we know each other more and like we'll be able to continue this relationship. So I love that everything that you're teaching. Yes, we have the plan, but you're really prioritizing the authenticity, the brand voice, the collaboration, the community. I applaud you for that. It's not just like <laughs> post plan. It's really taking that um, into consideration when you're working with your clients, which sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting when you think about the kind of community that you're building yourself and then the kind of community you're building for your followers, which are you know the same, but also different. And I know that not everyone wants to go out into the world and to do things, um, in terms of networking events, they are great and, and they usually you usually leave feeling really good. But at the same time, the digital place that we're in in 2024 is so amazing because you can do it online. And you'll be surprised if you're someone who's reluctant to reach out to someone. It's very rare for someone to kind of turn you down. Like you find in this community, like you can find a mentor, you can find like a business friend, like they're probably in the same boat as you and just say, hey, can we grab like 20 minutes and get have like a coffee at 9 a.m.? on Thursday, um, you know, I'd be surprised if you come back saying like every person I emailed said they would not grab a coffee with me digitally when they're having coffee anyways in the morning. <laughs> right. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. And and it's uh, as you're saying that, I'm like, I have a call in 15 minutes with <laughs> one of my friends that I met in a program and we talk every two weeks for an hour and I've yeah. traveled all over the world to like hang out with her, you know, and we meet up all over. Oh, cool. And so, yeah, it does take that. And I get it. Anyone listening, I totally get it. I'm right there with you. Like it's really <laughs> scary, but we have to go out of our bubbles. And especially when it comes to social media, you know, I think it's a misconception that like the comments that you see on someone's posts, especially those big beginning ones are like a complete stranger. Mine are always past clients yeah. or friends or, you know, somebody that's just like, this is a great post or I love learning this from you. Like they're the ones that are speaking up and then that's helping you obviously with the algorithm, the algorithm loves that. They don't know it's a past client. They just know that someone commented. Right. So don't be afraid to take the strategy to create this network that's going to support you on social media and then ultimately help you with your growth and engagement as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yay. Oh my gosh. This was so good. It's so juicy. I loved all the little <laughs> nuggets. I wrote, I took so many notes because I was like, all right, we got to remember some of these when we promote the episode. For anyone listening and they're like, all right, I need to look into your company and social media management because I always tell my clients, if you're going to invest in support, always invest in marketing first because it has the highest ROI. Where can people find you? And is there anything else that you want them to know? Yeah, I love to talk to anyone listening. I love to talk about this stuff. I could talk about so many things we talked about today for another hour. So I'm available for that. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, just my name. Um, you know, I love posting and talking to people on there. You can find cleosocial.com, more about us, and at cleosocial on Instagram as well, where we post all these tips and when we have new blogs. So you can keep up there to hear more about this. Yeah, I got most of these like things that you were talking about, like from your social media. So if you are wanting like social media insight and tips throughout the week, I highly recommend that they follow you on Instagram because you have some really great content over there. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. We'll have everything in the show notes as well and over on brandmary.com in the blog post. As you know, we link everything there. So be sure to check that out if you want to go deeper and reach out to Blair and her company. Thank you so much for coming on today, taking the time to come on today. I know you're busy and I really, really appreciate all of your insight. Yeah, it was great talking to you. Thanks for having me.